So TikTok got are, Stephen are Aiken. Yeah, we're recording. Oh, this whole thing's been this recording. Whole recording, recording. That's funny. You got some weird shit when you went downstairs. Hey, that's probably. cool. Oh no, no, no. I, I started it right before I sat down. So, All right, so that running. that'll be edited out. Yeah. Start, over. Start over. That'll be edited out. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't care. I don't know. So, uh, Stephen Aiken, Jimmy Barnett, we're at Tech Talk today. Uh, Stephen is my first legit guest on this thing. And um, I kind of just, he's opening a new school and I look up to him a lot. He's one of the men, one of my mentors that helped me open Tech Center. Uh, mentally like prepared me told me i needed to get out and do things and um i'm very grateful for that so uh he was like it's no brainer for him to be one of the first real people to be on here it's so cool, man yeah it's, uh, really weird i don't know i don't think i've ever really sat in a one and done with uh with the microphones and everything right here and a video and all kind of stuff so it's really cool man it's a fun experience to be here and doing it with you man it's, it's really cool i think we we're talking about before the podcast earlier uh how, how much this place has changed because this is the same building you started what is it six years ago six years six years ago yeah uh and, it, and you've done a lot of work to the place it's changed probably several more times than i think uh but it looks nice man you keep adding things and features and uh just really making it a, a really cool spot man so it's nice to it's nice to be here and see that Dude, this is probably my favorite room in the whole place. Like, I love the training, and I love all that, but, like, uh, coming up here and playing the PlayStation 4 or just sitting around oh, okay. sitting around and, and talking with everybody, like, this is where everybody kind of becomes family. The, the hangout spot. That's yeah. Cool. That's cool, man. It's uh, probably needed in this area, you know, because this isn't necessarily a, a jujitsu and martial arts mecca here in Eastman, you know. Um, but that's cool, man. Because I mean, that's that's what what we're doing is is basically bringing people together and trying to. I don't know. I guess we like that. We like to say that we are doing it for everybody else to make their lives better or to you know all that kind of stuff. But it's really just to make me better and to make my life better because I really enjoy it. Uh, probably more than everybody else does that's why <laughs> that's why i decided to go you know so hardcore into it you know? yeah so same I, I like to just you know it's nice to say oh man we're doing this for you guys it's like no nah, man i'm doing this for me because i love it and like i'm gonna do it like you're gonna get a lot of great benefits out of it too because it's, <laughs> it's honest and true yeah. <laughs> like, it's all for me <laughs> yeah. no we was actually talking the other day and uh so good it's a good analogy or a good good thing or whatever that you were saying is like during this whole quarantine thing with the COVID-19 or whatever, like, you're sitting at home. You're not doing jiu-jitsu anymore. You're not around people anymore. And it's kind of, like, hard. Yeah. Because you're used to, like, helping people reach their goals. And you're used to, like, my whole life revolved around being on the mat. Yeah. My, I mean, my, entire, coach. my entire life. And uh, I made my life about it. And, and so have you. And, uh. Like, just hearing somebody else say that and, like, um, like I, I never really thought about it that way. But, man, I was get, I'm getting aggressive. I'm, like, just – I'm snapping on, like, Walmart greeters and stuff. Mm, <laughs> like, man, <laughs> like – Stay home. Like, <laughs> you, you didn't check their bag? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm man, just kidding. Nobody's checking but, bags right now, dude. They're like, they're like dude, did you steal it? I don't know, man. Just go ahead and walk out. I ain't looking at that I shit. I swear to you, I have never made it out of Walmart. If I'm by myself, I have never made it out of Walmart without them scanning every single item. I you just look, look I just look too nice. Profile. I'm just too nice. Like, they're like, oh, this guy's not going to. Like, they see me and they'll go, he's not going to snap on me if I add. I have so many, of these to, so many of these to scan, and this guy's not going to snap on me because he looks nice. He's easy on the eyes. Mm. That's that's <laughs> not true. I mean, you are easy on the eyes, but you will snap on them. It's, it's, it's all a big deceit. It's a deceit. It's all a deception. <laughs> um, <laughs> But, yeah, she stopped me, and there's, like, 100 people walking past. I just walked to the curtain, went behind the curtain. She's like, no, I'm, I'm like, no, nah, you just let me know when you're done. 
I will. Just take I'll, my bags. And yeah. <laughs> rummage through them real quick. I'll come back when you're done. If you've ever flown, it's basically the same thing the TSA does or whatever. They yeah. just, just hand you your, all my personal stuff, and I trust that between here and wherever I'm going, <laughs> nothing weird is going to happen. <laughs> all, all my personal belongings and That's toiletries great. and stuff, you know. So, so I don't know. We're, we're built for this shit by now, I guess. Yeah. But but dude, it is. It's true what, what you were saying about. Um, uh, what, what we were talking about with the the lockdown and how it's affecting people differently and stuff. Um, you know, I, I definitely knew that it was affecting me already early, but I didn't know to the extent, to the extent for sure, because I thought mostly it was related to not being able to open the gym, you know, because we were scheduled to open, try to do the soft opening on April 1st or yeah. so. Uh, so that was... Yeah, you That's didn't even get I to thought, open at all, which is better, I think, now because I didn't have to deal with deal with it, worry about it. I don't, I didn't have like people counting on me, and like that's what I'm saying. Uh, I realized, you know, through sitting there that I didn't have all those people counting on me, and like I didn't need, like they didn't need me or what, you know. So, so that was good that I didn't have to be that role uh, so early into being a new business owner, also. Because, it, I mean, as you know, you could be as good as you want at jiu-jitsu and suck as a business owner and be out of business. Like yeah. Uh, so, so for me, it, it's a new it's a new set of skills that I'm having to learn and develop so that I'm, I'm really glad that I wasn't put in a situation immediately as a business owner where I had to basically choose between people's, like, life and death kind of is what it sounded like in the beginning was like, if you do this, you're going to have people dying. You know, so I'm glad that I didn't even have to to worry about that part of it. Um, but a month, six weeks, eight weeks or so, I think this week, <laughs> yeah, uh, we kind of counted it up at home. Uh, I think this is like the eighth week that we tried to to you know do the social distancing and only go out for essential item thing, uh, staying away from you know public places too much and. Uh, Man, it's been tough on us because we have kids that are home. They don't have anything to do. They don't have their friends. Uh, they don't have their normal hobbies and activities. My son was in kindergarten. Uh, so he, he, like, you know, he was really enjoying kindergarten. Like, he was enjoying going to school. He was doing really well in school. So that really upended all that for them. And, like, it's gotten to the point where they're starting to really express it out loud. That they were getting, or I'm ready to go. Sad. Well, they're just like I'm sad. I miss my friends. Or like, uh, like Charlie yesterday. uh, She's my three year old. uh, For everyone else, uh, we were sitting there, and this is how I know that. This is how I know how much it affected me uh, yesterday, because when she she asked me, we we were just kind of talking. She was sitting on my lap, and, and she was just like, "Daddy, is the coronavirus over yet?" And I was like, no, baby, it's still, you know, it's still going or whatever. And she's like, well, I want to go to the park. And I was just like, well, you know, I, I hadn't even thought about the park. Like, things have been opening back up recently or whatever, but I've just been so in my head about everything. I just didn't even consider that we could take them to the parks and it would be fine to take them to the park and let them play and get outside and go do all that stuff. I was just so, like, caught up in, oh, they got everything closed down that I didn't even go look. Right. I just, in my head, I was just like, yep, shut down. Everything's just shut down. And I was like, oh, man. Because I started talking to some people. I was like, I think I posted on Facebook, and people were like, uh, I think the parks are back open. And I was like, that makes a lot of sense, actually. I feel really dumb. Like, I, I did. I felt kind of dumb and embarrassed that I, that I didn't even think about. Like, I didn't even think. That's how I know. That's what I'm saying. That's how in my head I was, and I didn't even know it, that I was not even willing to go look at parks to see if they were op- open and stuff yeah you know? so it's kind of eight weeks of like lock it's too much for me i can't take it like i can't handle i can't handle the non-interactions with people and 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 like we were saying there's like jujitsu and mma and martial arts that's how i interact with the world that's how i express myself that's how i get my exercise uh that's that's the reason i stay disciplined uh, same with, with food uh it's the it's the reason i like, it is what I put everything on for the last several years 
that when it went away, it kind of took away a lot of the good parts of who I am as a person, like all at one time, if that makes sense, you know. I understand it. Because, right, I so like, these guys do. But as a I'm coach, not. you know, I've gotten used to helping people. I've gotten used to, like, people looking up to me. You know, I've gotten people, you know, that that count on me to, to help them, and they, they respect my opinion, and, and they like hanging out with me, and they like doing jujitsu and stuff with me, which is what I like to do. Right. And so whatever people's, like, interests are, whatever their hobbies are, when you're in a group of people that are doing that, you know, and everybody's, like, into it and focused on that, or, you know, whatever it is you like to do, um, it's just really fun. And, you know, as it, we've talked about and the, the reason that we're here at all, talking to you about it for several years, is, like, design my life around this on purpose because this is what I wanted to do. This is who I wanted to be. Uh, and it's the first time that, I mean, I wasn't injured, so I, I, I've only ever taken time off uh, when I was injured or had to have surgery or something like that. I've never purposefully taken time off healthy for more than like a week or two for a vacation or something small like that. Yeah. Uh, and so getting ready to open up the gym, I was kind of resting already. You know, you know, we were coming over there. You were helping me get things set up, building out and things like that. <laughs> so I was just taking like a month or so anyway where I wasn't going to really train or, or do anything uh, prior to opening just getting ready to go do that. So I was already, like, not doing the stuff that I wanted to be doing, kind of. Yeah. Because I had the stuff I needed to do. And so I was trying to be responsible, et cetera, et cetera. And then I was about ready to get back <laughs> into the thing. Like, I was really gearing up yeah. to get started. And then all of a sudden, it was just like, mm. Punch the chest, you know. Nope, you ain't going nowhere. (laughs) Go sit back down. (laughs) uh, Learn a little bit more patience. See if you can be a little bit more patient before you before you can get started. Like that's that's the only thing I can kind of think of with it. All right, let's backtrack a little bit. How did you get into this? (sighs) Into what do you like? What do you mean? How did I get into MMA? So that I mean, that's the thing is like Um, it could go back to. There's so like. So many different when I look, avenues. Like, like that's the thing. That, I, I, I've done this built up to a couple it. of interviews, and I did one the other day, and I was talking about it with him, and like I, I can't like remove myself from this person uh, for, throughout my whole life. Honestly, uh, I always was pulled towards something like this. Whatever this, I, know exactly I didn't know what, what you mean. this was. I didn't even know this existed for a long time. But, like, you know, I grew up tough. Uh, my dad and my uncles and stuff were really tough guys. Uh, good-hearted folks, you know, but just known to be really tough far, you know, fighters uh, in the area. And there was eight of them in the, in the <laughs> little town we were in. My grandma and granddad had ten kids. Eight of them were, were boys. And they were all, like, roughnecks that were known to be really tough. And My daddy was, like, one of the toughest ones, like, the toughest people alive, apparently, from so many people I heard. Like, that's what I grew up under, is that people would, when I would meet men, they would tell me how tough, tough, it was either how tough he was or badass he could be, or how nice and good of a person he was, or whatever. It was was one or the other, no in between. So so that was like, all right, well, that's that's it. That's what I want to be. I want to be... The guy that can beat everybody up, but also the really <laughs> kind, loving, compassionate person that that'll give you I like any it. anything I can. Um, and so, I, like, I, d- I don't know if I really like thought it all out this way. Like, so that's the thing. Is that answer this question several asked me this question several years ago. You probably would have got a different answer in a lot of ways. Like when I first started, if you asked me why are you doing this, I would have uh, because I can because I can beat people up. That's why, you know, that was like the simple. It felt good kind of answer because I didn't think about it past that. <coughs> but then. Corona. Definitely. Got that Rona. We're just sitting here but, spreading it. So through that. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> <laughs> this is um, like six feet ish, maybe. Yeah, we keep it in somewhat distance. <laughs> but. So there was that always. Um, I love professional wrestling. 
as never, a kid. ever, ever got into it. Man, it was always a big never. part. A big, big part. Of a lot lives. of people come from that background. <coughs> I mean, a, it's there's important. a lot of people that that are got into MMA because of pro wrestling, and I, I was just never into it at all. Yeah. Like, not even a little bit ever. My brother, though, my brother, like, put on the, the Speedos and, like, wrestled. Yeah. Like, fly, that he was a high flyer. It's like 175. Really? Oh, he really did try to do it. Yeah, oh, okay, like, cool. um, he trained with uh, Jake the Snake. I guess that's the guy's name. Mm, that's one, yeah. Yeah, he trained with him and, nice. like, went and set up the cages and, like, done the soft shows or something like that. that I don't was, know yeah. the guy, but I, I went to one of my brother's shows to support my brother. But, uh, yeah, like, that's they, funny. Yeah. Like, Jake the Snake's, like, one of the most popular. If it's really Jake the Snake Roberts or whatever. It's that's, like that's one of the biggest name dudes ever. Well, that, um, that this guy was Jake the Snake, and he was teaching my brother how to be a wrestler. Hmm. Him and Kobe, uh, Kobe White. Cool. That's cool, man. Yeah, like, I don't. I like, would have done that. Like, that's the thing. Uh, I would have done that had there been away or had i saw a means to do that probably maybe but that's the thing when i was i think i was 10 years old or so when the ufc the first ufc really came out and uh about that same time i guess is when i was getting smart er and i wasn't such a little mark for the for for pro wrestling or whatever and i started realizing yeah. it was scripted and things like that were a little bit you know it wasn't always what i thought it was so you know yeah, um, kind of flipped. They, they got um, right up the road from here. There's this huge hunting camp. Um, what's a guy who, like drinks beer and like smashes it on his head and Stone Cold? Yeah, he hunts like mm, yeah, pretty close up here. Yeah, I've yeah. seen that on this podcast and stuff. Yeah, he something. hunts like I mean, it's it's like 15 minutes from here. Nice. And uh, then the Steiner brothers used to hunt there. Nice. Like it's it's a big thing. Right there, I don't. I've never. You but, suck, dude. <laughs> yeah, like, like, some some dude. You know, I was like, I don't know what the name is. But his, uh, so we was out there and we met him, and his full. I had a full size ninety four Dodge Ram at the time. I was a kid, mm -hmm. and his full was bigger than my truck. <laughs> Might as well be. <laughs> like, like his full. All that money. His full was legitimately bigger than my truck. Like I'm not even making that up. Like it was just. This huge four-wheeler, he had a cooler beer on the back. Of course. And he was legitimately hunting off his four-wheeler. Mm. I Stone guess. Cold. Do what he wants. Do what he wants, right? What's <laughs> not you know, and so, like, there's that, there's that, and then, like, it went to, you know, grew up during all that time. Like, from the age of 10, I wasn't, like, training or anything. I tried to wrestle – like, our high school got a wrestling team, like, my junior year, I think. I believe that. I can't I don't remember how accurate that is. But one of the years, I can't remember. Uh, it was after we were there already. And so I tried to wrestle but wasn't able to, like, maintain being on the team at all because we lived 20 minutes out into the country. Oh, that sucks. One way down yeah. like three dirt roads to get there and stuff. And uh, I can relate. Like, just couldn't get the ride. Like, the, getting a ride home. Back and forth. Like, you got to stay for practice. Stuff. Then how are you going to get right. home? Exactly. And I get and it. And then I was going, like, I was going through, like, a rebellious stage at that point, too. So it was kind of one of those weird times where I can look back now, though. And I think this is one of the reasons I, I kind of wanted to be a good coach, too. Is like, I can look back and see that this was, like, a really pivotal time where I was trying to do the wrestling thing. Like, I was trying to, like, switch from being the rebel kid that I was becoming into like trying to do something more positive yeah. or whatever but i just couldn't so, so it was another one of those like things where it was just like i'm just not gonna ever get a break you know so i just live my life that way like i'll never get a break and then uh you know it's like i say everything is the reason that it happened so when i was really young i lost my mom she died when i was three uh about a month before my 21st birthday my dad passed away about six months after that, my best friend died in a car accident. So at 20, I was like crazy, you know, really trying to figure out the meaning of life at that point a lot. And then I, but I went party crazy instead of like discipline crazy. Goals and yeah. 
because uh, I, ha- I had never been around anybody that was really disciplined in goal setting and, and would do stuff like that. And so work, jobs, drinking, partying, um, four or five days a week or whatever, you know, for, for years. And then finally, you know, I had a, I had a pretty good job. And uh, it allowed so much free time that uh, I was, I guess I was good at it too, that I was just on the internet most of the day. Uh, and I'd gotten into MMA at this point, like watching it and always wanted, you know, oh, I could do that. I would do that. I'd knock out this guy. I'd knock out that guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I, a typical, you know, the typical dude, that was me. I was that. So that's just another a reason. young kid trying just, to be like, yeah, oh, just, yeah, I'm yeah, tough. And a and dummy, you know, that could fight in the bar because I would hit people fast and. It wasn't a real fight, like, you know. So I did that and then met some dudes on a forum uh, called Sure Dog. That was a, a big MMA forum back in the day. I remember that. And just talking, 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 and saw where they're going to have some tryouts for this team. It was it ori- it was originally called Sure Dog, and, like, it was like a forum where you could be marked as a fighter or well, they would. They would. If you were a fighter, they would tell you like you, green. You would have your name that you were a fighter and whatever. So like, it was a big deal. A lot of the big name fighters come were, from that. They were on there, yeah, uh, a lot until it, like the internet became really popular, I guess, and people started really trolling a lot. Uh, and then they kind of stopped because people were being dicks. And so, I mean, if you if you guys don't know, fighters we're the most sensitive people in the world, <laughs> yeah. like straight up, hundred percent, hundred percent. I'll get mad, you know, and I'll be upset for like a, a month about some stuff people would say about me back in the day, you know, <laughs> uh, about fighting and stuff like that, you know. So you have to stay off of that stuff once you get to a certain point. Didn't you get into an argument on there with a guy you fought? Well, he, so a little bit, it, like he was arguing at me, and and so I was still just trying to be nice. And respectful or whatever. I thought I remembered you telling like me that. a story about that. And uh, and Richard Cox is the one that basically went off on him and kind of argued at him. Because, like, that was the thing. It's like, another, again, like, I was trying to be, once I got into this, so we can get to, the, like, that part of it, too. But, yeah, that did happen. But, uh, so, met these dudes. I was about 375 pounds. You know, really fat. Terrible, like, shape. And, like, just decided that when I saw that tryout, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go do that. I'm gonna go try out, and then that way I can say I tried. Yeah. That way, when it don't work out or whatever, I can say I did it. I flew out there to California. I tried out. I didn't make it, but I tr- I tried. And so whatever. That was kind of I think honestly what I was gonna do, um, but I rented the car, got the flight. First time I ever flew. Uh, by myself, nice. you know, flew out to L.A. because I thought that's where I was going. But then I had to drive to San Bernardino, which is like an hour or two away from there, which is just a really dangerous, it was a really dangerous city at that point. Uh, <laughs> it was. I had no idea. And uh, where we were staying was right downtown. Where it's, It was super dangerous. But it didn't matter. Uh and I didn't know. Just doing a thing. Well, I didn't know at first either, right? So it, that was two things. I didn't know, and two, it, it didn't matter. Just to clarify, what, what kind of tryout was it? It was just an MMA team tryout. They're like, you're going to be a fighter. Like, did you, we're going to try to with, – so they were literally trying to start – it was a sports university. Like, a Korean dude uh, started this school and was trying to get, like, degrees in sports management, marketing, whatever kind of coaching degrees yeah. and different things like that. And uh, so they were trying to build an MMA team to be a part of this university because MMA was really huge then. It was like 09, 08, 09. So this was like really, really big. And uh, so they were just looking for anybody that would A, want to be on an MMA team, and then two, would want to go to college. And I was like, well, shit. I want to do both of those those things. Yeah. uh, and, And, you know, really turn things around as a person and, and in my life or whatever. And so I went <clears throat> and we got to the tryout, you know, I got there to the place and it was me and a couple of other dudes there that day. <clears throat> and like, of course, like any tryout with this kind of stuff, you know, it's going to be mostly like cardio and conditioning stuff. They're trying to break. you. How many tread- times can you sit on this bucket? <laughs> How many times can you run around this thing? Sprints on the treadmill and then bear crawl around the track 
or burpees or jumping jacks or throw punches, you know, different things like that. And it was just, <coughs> it was just hell. I don't even know how long it went, dude. But, like, guys were quitting, and I was dying. Like, I would run off the mat to the bathroom and go throw up. I would go throw up. And I was like, every time I was like, well, this is it. I'm not going to be able to go back. They're not going to let me back because I did this. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. when, I, when I get off the mat, that's going to be it, right? But I wasn't doing what everybody else was doing. I wasn't leaving the mat and then just laying out or whatever. I was leaving the mat. I would throw up or whatever, wash my face, and I'd come back, and I'd try to finish the drill. And I did that four or five times probably. And then it was over. Um, I was, like, recovering or whatever, like, you know, laid out. I was dying. And, um, you know, the coach came down, and he was like, um, you are in terrible shape, right? You're, you're, you're not even anywhere close to a fighter or whatever. But the effort you just showed was really, like, impressive. It was amazing. Like, I've never really seen somebody do that. So – Nice. We're going to offer you a spot. Like, we need people like you here. And I was like, oh, shit. Okay. All right. So they said yes. Nice. So, so then I was, was like, awesome. that was it, though. Like, when they said yes, I was like, I'm doing it. Like, I'm doing it. So I went back home. I started telling my, my friends and family. And, of course, people were like, eh, yeah, you're never going to do it. We'll never do it. You'll never do it. People were talking trash. You know. <sighs> Like that's that's another thing too, and it's another topic. But like, the people you know the the best, or, or most of your life, a lot of times can be the they'll ones hold that you back. They'll hold you back the most, yeah. and it's and and they mean well. Like they're not trying to. I don't think a lot of times they're trying to be that way. Sometimes they are, but a lot of times I think that they're just really trying to protect you, and they really care. They about don't want to see you they fail see you and hurt. have to try to right. recover they from right. that. Yeah. They don't want to see that. And so it's better not to try. Right. And and so that was how I, that's how I lived my whole life up to that point, though, was like, yeah, I'd rather just not let anybody see me fail. Yeah, just, I, I, I had try. that. I had to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Like the way my, my family was set up and stuff like uh, it was just my dad was hard or whatever. I had to be perfect. So I didn't try a lot of things because I knew that I wasn't going to be perfect at it. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I get it. It is. And and so but all it took was one person to believe believe in me one day. And so and dude it's it's so stupid like this it could be a, a freaking book probably this whole experience just at that school the whole like time there and the and the things that that I did and and the experiences. But like so I went home uh I got rid of all the things that I basically had that I, I wasn't going to take anything with no furniture. Like, I didn't have a car. Um, just, like, three bags of clothes and my Xbox was literally all I had that I took with me to California when I flew out there. And the that was your day, mistake, Xbox. The day I got there, they fired the coach that gave me my spot. No. Uh, so I didn't know anyone there except him. I hadn't met anyone else. And so I didn't look like a guy that was supposed to be at the sports university, especially not one that was supposed to be a new member of this MMA team that they were building. But they brought in like the new guy that was coming in, uh, this Samoan guy named Puni. And for whatever reason, you know, he was just like, whatever, we're going to honor that and just we'll let you stay. Just, you know, work hard, you know, do the right. And so I did. And, like, I literally became a new person like almost overnight when I was able to get out of where I was and be there. Like, I think the expectation was in my mind, I thought the expectation was a lot higher. And I think they may have had a lot lower expectation in, in San Bernardino for me than I thought. You know what I mean? So yeah. like, there was no pressure from them the way that I assumed it would be. And everybody was really supportive. Like, all the people that were there were really cool. Uh, it was a real big culture shock, you know, because it came from a 
real tiny town. Backwoods, Georgia. In, in Bainbridge, you know, and and only really knew one kind of person, no matter what race they were. Basically, everybody's about the same. You know what I mean? You believe a few things differently or whatever, but y'all, yeah. everybody grew up in Bainbridge, man. This is all we all know. Not many of us have traveled the world. Not many of us had gotten out. Our parents weren't really the ones that did that kind of stuff either. So everybody was kind of the same. But that night I got dropped off in my dorm room. Uh, I had <laughs> Man, roommates. that was a shock. Well, I had roommates. And, and when the guy that was going to be my roommate was going to be a Mexican dude, that was he was... He's Cal- he's American, but he, he's Mexican, uh, born in California, and uh, dude, it turned out to be like one of my best friends or whatever. We still talk randomly now. Um, he didn't end up fighting or anything. He eventually just you know went back home over time. But he, he was like a guy I was sharing a room with now, and a stranger. And then in the other room uh, of the apartment were two girls, uh, a Mexican girl, and then um, a black girl. And I was just like, I'd never stayed with people outside of, you know, just the people like some some people from home, like black folks from home or white folks from home or whatever. And so like I was with these people that I didn't know from California, and I was just like afraid of what was gonna happen. Like I didn't know, <laughs> like you know, because you have all these prejudices, and I don't necessarily mean like negative prejudices, right. but just like California people are going to be crazy and they're going to be assholes and they're going to be what they were the nicest, just so kind and like really nice people. And they, they helped me because they were athletes. All of them were athletes. The two girls were like almost on the Olympic Taekwondo team. That's how good they were. They oh, were right nice. there, like fighting nice. at that level. Yeah. Uh, so, cause it, that's what the Korean guy was doing too, was trying to get like a really strong Taekwondo team there. Cause Korea and Taekwondo, like, where it came from right so like he was built and so one guy that was there uh also is james moon tossery and and many of you may may or may not know who that is but at that point he was just a taekwondo fighter and in 2009 he was the usa male athlete of the year for taekwondo uh like for the olympic style sparring or whatever but he just couldn't beat this one dude that was in his weight class basically to ever get there this one dude in the weight class was like he was the man like and, th- and that happens, right? That yeah. Happens. There's only one spot, and if this guy's the best... It's mine. He's the best. Yeah. And that's it. Or it's his. And so, James got a little disgruntled with Taekwondo and started coming over to some of our MMA trainings or whatever. But he, but he like, became, like, my strength and conditioning coach, and, like, he would knock on my door in the mornings before he was getting up to go do his workouts and stuff like that. And it was like, come on, fat ass, let's go. Come on, piece of shit. You know, and not in the, not in the bat, you know what I mean? Right. But just I know, like I in, a lo- in yeah. the most loving, like, I'm not going to let you fail kind of way. Yeah. Well, like, let's go. And that changed me so much. It it does. Just having one person treat you like you're not white trash. Uh, and, and that's my experience. Like, I grew up, everyone in my area was like, white trash, white trash. Like, you're, you're not the people, but like, they, my, like, I'm white trash, you know? Yeah. And um, uh, Captain Parks is the guy that really changed my mentality that that changed me. So I, I understand exactly what you mean when you're talking about uh, having that one person believe in you. And I think that's what makes a really good coach. And me and you having those experiences, we kind of like want to give that same feeling to people that that we receive, like have somebody like – push you or or make you feel like they they care about where you are and what you're doing right. and i give i give 110 to anybody that shows up yeah like i give it i give them everything i can to make them succeed and i, I think that's wise because nobody ever really took a chance and well, that's yeah. that's so i guess that's i guess how i could relate to what you're saying well, so it gives like it gives you a different perspective too um because it's easy now for everybody that sees me and people that, that meet me now and they're like, Oh, this is Steven. Uh he's a you know, black belt, Tim Planet Black Belt under Richie Martinez. He was at Tim Planet San Diego coaching, you know, blah, 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 blah. All the things I've done or whatever, I still remember that first day. I still remember getting my butt kicked so bad all the time, going and crying every night. And, and just wanting to be better. and But then people telling me that I could and that I would be better. Like, that's it. Like, you suck today. 
and that's okay. You will be better if you keep trying hard. Right. Nobody like really expressed that to me in a way, I guess, growing up or in any other thing that really like made it resonate w- with me in the way that, that, that fighting or martial arts did or the way that some of those people were doing it. And so I, learning to embrace that struggle and not hide from it yeah. was important. Learning that I don't know everything is important. It is. Learning that I can't beat up everybody, that was important. Like you can't, I can't, I still can't, I still can't like, and it doesn't matter. Also learning that was important that you don't win all the time and that's okay. That took a lot longer to learn than almost anything else. I learned it pretty quick. <laughs> like, I learned to lose. Like, I I'm, learned, I'm 138 pounds. Like, eh. Well, you lose. That's the thing. It's like I lost, I lost matches. I lost fights and stuff like that. But I never, it took a long time to lose the fear of losing. Yeah, I still, style, I still feel that. Whatever. Right, we talk about that. You yeah. Know? And it's just like, and I, I think I think a lot of that finally, and I, if I was going to fight again, it would probably still be there, maybe. But uh, for sure, just in jiu-jitsu, uh, my mindset changed over the years. People still, like people, you st- like I still seek out and need people at a higher level than me mentally as a coach or as, as a person that's done this kind of stuff to, uh, to like give guidance on stuff. Cause like I'm a black belt, but that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean anything really. Like, except for that I've earned, you know, I've earned, yeah, a black, you earned a black but belt, like, but that doesn't you're make still me, learning, still growing. Right. It's just started. I'm not perfect. I don't know everything. I don't do everything right. There's things that like I, I haven't experienced, especially as a coach. And like I said earlier, as a business owner or as a black belt now, it's different because people, People expect things from you uh, as far as, like, a level of competence in certain ways. And sometimes, like, it's not there, <laughs> you know. It's still, yeah, it's like, oh, I, know, it's, I, don't, I don't know that, uh, you know, right? And, yeah. and that's okay, though. Like, that, like, being able to accept imperfection, I guess, is, 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 a, is a hard it is. It's hard for some people. It's it hard very for me. Hard I for me. Like I, I think I think that was the thing is like I went from perfect and the need to be the the best and the smartest and brightest and whatever to I just didn't care. It's probably what made you completely really did good fighting. Not though. care though, and then found fighting, and then became a student again and became well. That's the thing is like I was talking to my niece about that too, about something like that in school is like. She she likes learning a lot of stuff now. She's graduated or whatever, like a lot of different things. And and she's like, is it weird that I'm so interested in learning now and I just hated school? It's like I don't think that's weird because I, I think I experienced the same thing because I did too. you don't they're not they're not you're not learning what you care about. You're not learning something that you're passionate about. You're not learning something that you think is going to actually make you better. And so you don't apply yourself. I, I agree much. 1 million percent that's what I was oh what I was gonna say is like all this stuff that I built all this stuff here you, you don't learn that sitting at a at a desk right you don't learn that like being talked to mm-hmm. like you you like some of this stuff I messed up and I had to fix it I had to make it better and um but it's something that interested me like the computer that we're using like I built it like it, it's not you can't go to Walmart and buy it like I built it like, nice. and like that, that type of stuff, like to me is like stuff that I'm into. But if you told me I had to go down there and learn calculus or something, I would not be excited about that. I would be like, well, my, my coach told me, my coach told me I got to learn this, this stuff. And it would take me a lot longer. Yeah. I mean, and, and I wouldn't be fun. And that doesn't make it not useful, I guess. And calculus maybe is a different thing than other things, but like, just because you don't enjoy something doesn't mean you, it's not worthy of learning right. either. So I don't, I don't want to say that, but like, there's there's something for sure about chasing your passion, and I don't, I know, it's not for everybody because it's scary and it's uncertain. It's hard. Uh, it is hard. It is very hard, and you're gonna lose, um, off and on a lot. Uh, people and money and matches and whatever time whatever but 
like like I said, I realized once I started really doing this that this was this was it. This was this was all I was gonna do, and I started learning more things that were gonna facilitate that forever. To and I didn't to make know. sure you could do what you wanted to do. And at first, it was just skills. I'm trying to get as many skills as I can. That way, I can be the best fighter I can. Get to the UFC because if you get to the UFC. That's guaranteed that I'm be a gym owner and make money because I was in the UFC because people just gonna come to the UFC guy who fought and makes money. But that's not I've learned now. That's not true. There's several UFC guys who've went out of business trying to open gyms several times. Uh, being a UFC fighter does not make you a good coach or a good business. It doesn't. Owner. It doesn't make neither. Right. And so that's two different things. That being a good fighter does not make you. It does not make you a good coach, and it does not make you a good business owner. I got a couple of world champion. Uh, guys that are in my group that just lost their gyms because of the the virus. Right. And that's, I mean, and again, that's a different thing altogether too with like catastrophe and things like that. How do you, how do you deal? Yeah. It's, like, it's, it's something that you have to, you have to learn. You I know, have to experience. I know guys that are struggling that are like world champions that are struggling to pay their bills because they just don't understand the business side of, of it and marketing and stuff. And, and you, I mean, you know me, like I, I constantly try to help everyone, but at the same time, I don't want to make it like I'm like a slap in the face when I offer help. Like, Hey, like I, I got you or whatever. And I'm, I'm some, sometimes I'm not even the right person to try to help, mm-hmm. but I, I just have this, like, I want to, I want everybody that meets me to leave with a, with a, a good feeling and knowing that I care about about them or whatever but like these guys man that were there i'm watching them lose their dream and lose their their stuff but and i'm blessed i've built a, a culture where people wanted to take care of us and wanted to keep this place here and that takes time oh dude and douglas didn't make it like i lost in this i've lost a business and i realized how much how strong my core group here was too so it, i see both sides of this thing but Anyway, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, I was just, I mean, it yeah, is. I was just saying, um, like, hey, it's it's crazy having to understand and learn business. Understand, you, you, jiu-jitsu is only part of it, and you'll never learn that completely. No. Like, you'll never, I still see stuff, and I'll, I've been doing certain moves for years that works, but then I'll see something, and I'm like, that'll make that so much better. Like, oh, my God, all I had to do was bend my ear down this way. You know, or right. whatever. It's just simple, some simple thing. And that's yeah. true. And this, that's true with almost everything. Like people who bake a lot or whatever, I'm sure they randomly come up with some new technique yeah. to making things that they <laughs> bake or whatever. And they're like, oh my God, I can't believe that I didn't know this. Or you know, And like, whatever. And I guess that's what I've learned. Like through, through all of this, I've learned a lot, I guess. But I've learned to appreciate art. Of all kinds, of, of almost, I guess. I don't want to say every kind because somebody would have some really weird shit and I won't be, I won't be into that. Whatever. I can't think of it. But, yeah. you know, you know yeah. somebody's going somebody's to post something and be like, Steve is into this. Yeah, <laughs> Steve is into <laughs> But, like, like, I really enjoy performance. I really enjoy seeing people perform when they're passionate about it. Right. Like, the passion matters. Just, dude, the passion it, matters. It, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't even have to be that great always. But if somebody's trying their best... That gets me fired up, dude. I love to see people who really care. I love to see people trying their best. That's something that they really, really care about. And, like, you see, like, the passion. Like, people tear up and stuff when they really care, you know? Oh, yeah, like, win or lose, and you see someone tear up, man. I just... You think it's, like... like, In anything, but that right there kills me. You grow up with such a, you know, maybe when... We've talked about it enough. I say, you know, you... I, we grew up with such like a tough mindset or whatever. You never cry. Yeah. I'm not going to cry. No. Nobody's going to see me cry about any of this. Never. You know what I mean? Not going to happen. And I used to go hide after stuff when I was upset or even if I was like about to tear up and, and be happy tearing up. Uh, and like I've had to learn to just like embrace that passionate side of myself. Like I'm, a, I'm just a very passionate person. And and I and this is this is how I express that a lot of times is through jujitsu, martial arts, and, and then through coaching jujitsu and, and MMA. Uh, it's how I express myself. It's man, I'll never forget the talk you gave me. 
Like, Dude, it's funny, you know, and and that's the funny thing too. Like I think back to then, <clears throat> and and it's what's so cool too. Like I didn't know shit then. Dude, I didn't know anything about anything. Mm-hmm. Look, like to me, to me now, the me then didn't know anything. But so many of you guys come back <laughs> to me now and tell me, dude, you said so many things that were so powerful, and like the way, like with you, like you're like the model student though, as far as listening to me say things and people do it though. So it's kind of weird. I was like, I tell people this stuff all the time, so I'm just gonna stop saying it. And then I said the same stuff to you about like. If you want it, you got to get it. If you want to do it, you got to chase it and like be single get out minded. Of it. Get out of that. that just place. stop being whatever you're. You know, just go and do it, and don't don't beat around the bush. And then the same thing when you started talking about wanting to open this gym. Same thing was like, dude, if like if you, if that's what you think, if you're really passionate about it, it's going to be successful if you're really passionate about it. And it's funny, you know, because. I didn't know anything, you know? <laughs> so I was you just know like, how many people just told me coach. not to put a gym in Eastman? I can't imagine. Bro. Like, dude, I wish – if I had $100 for every person that told me the gym would not make it here in Eastman, Georgia, do not – like, I I would not – I'm not exaggerating. I'd have a couple thousand dollars in the bank. I mean, I'm not surprised, though. Like, but that's the thing. Like, <laughs> we had to teach people what Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu was here. Like, it people still didn't understand, and is this is in like it's 2015, like 2014 when I'm doing this, and people still don't understand how effective or what it is or what it like MMA. Like, oh, I'll hit you with this country boy right hand, and mm. and like they just didn't understand. They still don't. Like no, them. and we we're still having to educate and like no, come in here and try it and without bullying. But at it's such a fine line between offending somebody and or being offended or yeah <laughs> or like hold up like <laughs> what'd you just say? <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah, come on down, uh, free trial today. Yeah, <laughs> hey, here these gloves were made specifically for you. <laughs> he signed the waiver, right, babe? Hey, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, did you make sure? Yeah. Did you sign? Like, well, dude, that's uh, sorry, but like that. Nah. Honestly, like that right there, that little joke kind of thing is something that I think about a lot from that time uh, when I was first meeting you and stuff like that. I was still a hard ass, bro. I was a hard you, ass. You choked me in so many ways, and I would tap, and you was like, "No, you wasn't actually choking yet." Dude, okay. <laughs> like, so like you were soft though, man. Like, I was. You were. You, I was, that was the thing. But the like, thing you, was, I had a three hundred pound guy. Oh, not three hundred pounds on my back. Like two, How much was you? That's probably like two fifty then. Was, you, okay, I was, I was one hundred and twenty. You give me so, fifty pounds, though. Bitch. All right, two hundred, <laughs> two hundred and. <laughs> 99 pounds. So <laughs> I was not that big anymore. I was yeah. probably about 50 or 40 at least. Probably. Yeah, okay. So, so 250. You was on my back. You. Yeah. So. You was on my back and you had the position. And I'm like, I can't do anything. I might as well tap. And you was like, hell no, you ain't. I'm not even choking you yet, bitch. <laughs> and I'm like, I'd tap. And then you'd like, no. And then you'd, you'd sit there and then you'd squeeze and you'd be like, now you can tap. And <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> don't be, don't be. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. Is like I had been training for I would years. Never do that like, now. No, I know that. But see, here's the thing. I had been training for years, and uh, I had the gear. Like I had everything. I had a, I had a group of guys that we would just beat. These That's how you sh- caught my eye because you came in for your first all day, venom. So geared up. all venom. I had a I had a wholesale account with venom. Like I was, I was like selling venom to the other school, to the gym that I was training at. Mm. And, uh, like I got hooked. I had a hookup and they were like, yeah, when you fight, let us know the, the guy that I got the wholesale account from. And so I was like, yeah, let us know when you fought, you know, like we got you this and that. And, um, uh, cool. And I was buying a bunch of gear for this school and, that I was training at. And like, I was hooking people up and training. I've been training for years. And then I got there, and you just did whatever you wanted to to me. Again, the first time it happened to me was a kid. Like, I was taekwondo this, taekwondo that, um, all that stuff. Like, I was a fighter, kickboxing. Dude, I kickboxed, I boxed. Like, I did all of these things. 
never been introduced to grappling or wrestling. We didn't have it at our school, just country school. And uh, this wrestler kid just tapped me out over and over and over and over. I went home and cried. Mm. Like sitting on the end of my bed, I cried. And and it, then I was like, that was like, what are you going to do? I'm like, I got to learn this shit. I'm going to quit. Yeah, I'm not quitting. <laughs> so my coach would drop us off five miles out, make us run in. And like, it's just a cardio class. Taught me how to do a triangle wrong. Taught me how to do an armbar wrong. Not not bad mouthing. He was doing his best he could for the area. But then I, I ran into you, and you you did all that to me. And I had been training for a while. Like, for a long time I'd been training. Just with the, the not with the legit, not, I'm not going to say not legit, but just the wrong mentality. Mm. And um, you you said that to me. You was like, you need to travel. You need to go to other schools, and you, if you're really serious about this, like you need to get out because what you're doing right now, if you've been training as long as you say you're training, it's not working. And that's when I started, that's when I really started driving to making the train with Bubby. Mm-hmm. And I, like I was working on the road doing environmental work, I would, I would call gyms and I remember you tell me that and, and train at these gyms, and I would train at one gym for a month. And then I'd go to another gym when I when we would move and train at that gym for a month. And nobody ever really laid claim to me because I, I wasn't there. But I had been training for, man, I trained for a long time. And then full circle, you know, I, I finally decided I didn't want to do that anymore and started, I'm going to open a school. Mm-hmm. I opened my school two days after I got my blue belt. I thought you got it that day. Yeah, well, I got my, I did. I got my blue belt. I actually opened, I had the school as a white belt. And I didn't open to the public until uh, August 22nd. Mm -hmm. But uh, Frank Mullis came and gave me my blue belt. um, That, he gave it to me that Thursday. And we opened, we opened Saturday. That's right. I was here. TJ got his that day when I was here, not not yours. And I got my, TJ got his two. different day. That's TJ right. got his two days after I got mine. I remember that wrong. Because it was just, well, the he come back that Saturday for right, the grand right. opening and basically honored me. Like, I gave him his blue belt. He gave TJ his blue belt. Like, he, you was here. Yeah, yeah. And you was like, you deserve it. And that meant more to me than anything because I looked up to you. You oh, were. Man, you're a blue belt, but for sure by then. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. It so. took me. I, uh, I was a 12-year white belt. <laughs> Takes a little time, you know. <laughs> a little bit of a learning curve. That, I was like, I don't care about a belt. A belt just holds up your pants. I'm just a, I'm an MMA fighter. That's what white belts say. Yeah. Because I'm a white belt, right? <laughs> but. Yep. But, yeah, dude, like, it, it, and so that conversation with you was probably a conversation similar that I'd had with so many people. And I think I just was so frank with you about it because I was already getting jaded. Because nobody was listening. They come in and they tell me this. And, dude, I was living it, like, to what I think was the best of my abilities then. Now, looking back, obviously, I I always with the ability of hindsight, you could see things you could have did better or worse or whatever. So, at that point, though, I was, dude, I I was all in, 100%, doing the morning training, doing the evening trainings, doing the driving to train thing myself. Uh, So, that's that's how I knew that's what was needed to be done because I came uh, to Valdosta. I got my blue belt when I was in San Bernardino. So so to get all that back done, I was out there training with those people. Uh, about nine months in, I took my first fight. I had already done a couple grappling matches. Uh, I fought this guy. At, it's called a smoker. Uh, he was like a purple belt. It was in his gym. They gave him a split decision win against me. Uh, I don't know. It was boring. Too big heavyweight dudes that couldn't fight trying to fight uh, a lot of grappling that neither one of us like he was supposed to be a purple belt but he couldn't out grapple a nine month white belt but I was a nine month white belt that was training with legit three, guys well and two or three times a day too yeah so like I was doing gi jiu jitsu no gi uh, for MMA it makes a huge difference and strength and conditioning on a schedule like I didn't have that's we, rough it's all that's we a did rough schedule like, too but this is all we did though so that was that's what I'm saying it was like I went I had the ability to go from completely piece of shit, drunk, you know, desk worker, to when I moved out there, it completely, like, 
opposite lifestyle. 6 a.m. training. Uh, go eat some feels breakfast. feels good now, though. Rest, though take a shower. Oh, yeah. I miss it bad now. Yeah. Like, I miss that only having the alarm clock radio. I had already lost my Xbox and stuff for food, money, and stuff at one point. Uh, and all I had was, like, the clock radio. And I would just listen to the radio and read and fight. Oh, shit. I didn't know that. That's all I did for like that's last hard. Time. That's, that's why that's I moved hard. to Valdosta because I, I I finally had to like stand in the church food line one day to get some food because uh, I couldn't find work anymore to buy food, <laughs> and uh, that that was when I finally was like, Mandy, I gotta come over there. I think, uh, or it, I don't know what's gonna happen, you know. But like in that time, I fought that guy. My coach was like, dude, that guy's supposed to be, he's probably pretty tough. Supposedly pretty tough. Uh, low-level pro fighters are not that tough, so we can get you paid to fight professionally if you if you if you're willing, you know. And I was because I didn't know any better. Uh, I was like, "Fuck yeah, pro fighter right now, yeah, let's go." So, took my first pro fight probably within a year of training, I think, or so. Oh man, um, total uh, one. It was a different time back but, then too, right. though. Well, well, so, the, so like we were, it was we're, still getting built that too. Darn. But we were fighting for for a promotion that did a lot of the like Indian reservation shows and non commission shows. So my first pro pro opponent was like zero and five when I fought him. So he was like uh, the guy that they you know he fought for a couple hundred bucks and and he would lose. And but shit, I didn't know if I could fight yet. So it was a good fight. That got me a couple hundred bucks of food money and a guy I could win. So we did that. And then shortly after, they offered another fight to me. Uh, this guy was supposedly tougher. Uh, he didn't have any fights yet, though. But allegedly, it was like 100 street fights and, you know, just that <laughs> kind of claim. And, yeah. and that, at that point, that was still enough to make me really scared and nervous. Yeah. Uh, I still didn't know anything i've had a thousand street fights i had a bunch of street fights too but i didn't have like southern california street fights is what i was thinking in my mind like you know i fought in south georgia where we (laughs) fight and then we shake hands and shit you know not where we're gonna fight to the death or till people are really yeah i'd never been in a fight where people were hurt really bad or where i had to really really hurt somebody right like if you knock them down or Things got a little bit one sided. Stand them up. You, well, you stood up. Like, <laughs> I would stop on. You stand up on your own. Yeah. You know Respect. I mean? Like right. you it's didn't like, want. Pr- point was proven. There's yeah. No, you know that was it. That was all it was about. It wasn't about anything else. You know yeah, I, mean? I know exactly. I'm from. I'm from here. So that's yeah, the, so, I get it. So that's what I'm saying. But yeah. they, I felt like they were gonna have a different mentality. You know. Uh, so, but either way, got him. Uh, took him down. Choked him out in like two minutes or something like that. Ooh. And. Uh, then you feeling so yourself, I was feeling then. myself for sure. Then. Yeah, uh, and then time went around, and uh, they offered me a fight with Dan Severn. Uh, and for anybody that doesn't know, he's like a, a, a old. He was one of the early UFC fighters. Uh, he fought in the WWF or fought. <laughs> he wrestled in the WWF too, so he was like a wrestling name. Uh, UFC Hall of Famer. He won one of the tournaments back in the day. Uh, thought it was a great opportunity. I'd seen he's fought in. A lot of other up and, co- yeah. up and coming heavyweight guys, uh, and P- and it looked like the guys that beat him went on, and they were names that I recognized. And the guys that didn't beat him probably didn't ever hear about. Like a gatekeeper back then. Yeah, well, he was right for heavyweights. Everybody that was an up and coming heavyweight almost fought Dan Severn if you thought you were going to be pretty good, or if you were just getting a paycheck. Right. Well, I was a little bit of both. I wanted that paycheck because that <laughs> they offered me fifteen hundred dollars to show up. And fifteen hundred dollars to win, and then we were going up the around Salt Lake City, Utah, to a place called Elko, Nevada. Which is <laughs> another funny story uh, that we could just I could talk forever. About yeah, this. go ahead. But like, that's why we're here. This so, thing, this thing isn't timed. We're just chilling. So I and fought, talking. I fought Dan Severn up there and lost the decision just because I was not good. Like he didn't hurt me. He didn't really do anything but take me down. And like I didn't know enough. Like I didn't know how to use an underhook from the bottom. That's when I learned how to use an underhook from the bottom. What's an underhook? My third, <laughs> my third professional fight, I learned how to get an underhook from side control on the bottom. Because Dan Severn held me down, and I didn't know how to do it. And when I got back, my coach was like, this is what I was trying to show you. And I was like, word, that easy? And so the whole game changed again just from that one fight. <laughs> yeah. But it, at that fight with Dan Severn, we were in uh, a town called Elko, Nevada. Just a little, like, 
I guess it's like a mining town. Um, there are casinos there. There's also a, a reservation there. And, um, you know, me, my two corner men, we drove up there. We fought. We came home back down to California. And that was it as far as I was concerned from that night. Like, they didn't produce the fight to film. It's not out there except for I, I later did get a really bad copy that's on YouTube that's really staticky from my corner men. Um, but it's the fight's not out there otherwise. So, like, to me, it's a great memory and stuff like that that me and my buddies have and stuff, and it's on my record. But it wasn't like a, nobody else is going to ever remember this night. Nobody that was there. Yeah. It wasn't important to them because there was only like 300 people, maybe 400 people or something. It felt like to me. <sighs> Several it's, years it's later. It's crazy that he was taking fights like that, though, considering just, who he was. Well, he, but I was I was 2-0. and oh. That was some guy that had, they, they knew I'd only been training nine months or a year, so they told him that I'd only been. So these were the kind of fights he was taking, guys that he would mostly be able to beat. And that's, just get in check. And that's what I was saying. So he yeah. was still fighting to get paid, and he could beat guys that weren't on the up-and-coming train. Right. So, you know, he'd lose some to the guys that are on the up. But they, they had a hard time with him still because they were still so green. So new. And he was good. He yeah. knew how to play. Yeah, the, yeah. That's how he beat me. Because right? he knew, well, I'm going to wait, and now I'm going to grab, now I'm going to take down, and now that's all I'm going to do. And me, I was just like, I don't know what I'm going to do to win. I don't know how I'm going to win. I'm just going to win, or maybe. You if know. you had to fight him again, right? I, did, right I tried now. to fight him Same age, times. though. Same age. Like, if back we then, the but, age. like, no, back then, like, same example, but with all the knowledge you have now. Oh, I'd kill him. Yeah, but but how? What would you do to him? I'd put him in a twister. No. <laughs> <laughs> probably get his, I'd probably choke him. Probably get his back and choke him. Just take his back and choke him? Yeah, out of respect, I'd choke him. Uh, but I could TKO him. Right. Easily. Right, but it, it's cool looking back saying, oh, man, I would just... Oh, dude, I didn't know anything, though. Yeah. Like, that's what I said. Like, that's, I didn't know I anything. Underhook, yeah, all I had to do was get an underhook. Him over. And then I could have scrambled with him. We were Tree fighting. Top him. It's like elevation up there, five or 6,000 feet. So he would have gassed out if I would have went harder. Uh, I was in great shape, so I could have went harder. But I didn't because I didn't know it. But anyway, so that fight was that night. I've lived my whole life since then. Uh, and so just going to skip a bunch of things and get to another part that made this really cool. Uh, I was in San Diego. And I had posted something. I think I found a picture from that night of of my quarter man there holding my banner. And I'm standing up and, like, holding my fist up right before we were about to walk out. Somebody took some pictures for us, I guess. Uh, and I just popped it up as a memory on my Instagram. And some dude saw it that's from there who was at the fight that night. He opened a gym there in that town that night because he, sa- he says he saw that fight. And he saw some regular... Dude that nobody knows fight Dan Severn all the way to a decision and he was really like motivated and hyped up so now I go up there and teach seminars about twice a year at that, that is awesome and uh it's a really cool story you know that they fly me up there a couple times a year now to teach and, and like we have a really great relationship with those guys so so it's like that's what I'm saying is like you don't even realize don't what's going on what until doing, later man. you really don't and now, like, that dude, I, I, he's one of my, my favorite people, man. We talk all the time. And, you know, I love going up there. It's such a beautiful place. And, like, I would tell Mandy a lot of times, I was like, I would love to just go back up there and just see it again. Like, I'd like to see, like, I remember it was so pretty, but I was, like, only worried about fighting, fighting. and what we were doing. And, like, we, we went, we fought, and we came home kind of, you know, deal. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, I've done that a few different times. That is cool, but it's only because I took the risk, and you right? don't it's even only, know. Yeah, you don't I even know the know seed him. you was planting, like Nothing. and none of that. Like you don't know the impact that your your simple little words I have on on individuals, and so it's it's crazy, right? Yeah. And so those kind of things. Did you think I was going to be that one to listen? I didn't. Not for a long time, though. No. I, I didn't know. You thought I was just sure. going to be a Facebook gangster? Well, I just didn't because you you had your life, man. You had your life that you had to live. Where you were working so much and you, you had an important job that was very time consuming that made you travel and then move from that place to that place. And it, so I didn't know if you could, right? So it wasn't really like a judgment on whether you would or not. I was just like, oh, this is another one of these dudes that's older with a family and a really good job and he's just not gonna. It, why would you? Because nobody else is. Bro, I just, I was, I, t- I tell you. Like I, so I'd been training 
all these different gyms. And I was, it was Christmas. And I was sitting there, and my, my daughter's was getting older. It was Christmas. And I had saved up some money in my account and stuff. And because, I, like I said, I was making really good money. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was working, and it was like two days before Christmas. It wasn't Christmas Eve. The next day was Christmas Eve. And uh, my boss was like, I was like, all right, well, I'm getting ready to go home that night. And we'll just come back and finish it, you know, day after Christmas. He's like, no, I need you to finish the job. Mm. And I was like sitting there in a the truck and I had a whole crew with me. And I was like, what? And he was like, yeah, we got to finish this job. And I was like, okay. So Christmas Eve, I got up. I was sitting there in the truck. I got to the job site that morning, and I was like, hey, I'm going home. It's Christmas. He said, uh, well, if you go home, uh, don't worry about coming back up here. I need this job done. And I said, okay, you are uh, going to have to come to Douglas to get your crew because they're going home with me. And I left mm. and went home and uh, decided I was going to open a gym. On my way home. That's what's up, man. Like, I, I just decided, like, one day I was like, my kids are more important than making this amount of money. I'm always gone. I'm missing them growing up. Right. And, uh, like, something inside of me just, like, I don't, I'm not going to say broke, but, like, it just. Uh, Realized. Yeah. I was just like, a, this ain't worth it. I'm done. Like, I'm out. I mean, that's that's not unusual for a lot of people, too, that are in situations where they're trying to do something. And, you know, a lot of people have families, and a lot of guys have kids. and But that's the thing about this, man, and I think any sport, really, you got to be all in or you're not going to be what you want to be unless you just want to be a hobbyist. Which is fine. Which is fine. It's yeah. totally fine. I got but a the, lot of guys here that yeah. just do that. And so if that's what you want, that's that, cool. Yeah. But that's not what you wanted. That's not what you were saying you were wanting. And so it was like, it's not enough then. And then that was the argument I was having with a lot of the other people that I say. Uh, th- and so that's why I was so hard on people, though. Because I didn't feel like they wanted it as bad as I did. Well, you was working so dang hard and and living gave, that the, life was and giving everything. Yeah. everything. Yeah, and then you got people that are They're being probably maybe more capable, not more capable than you are as far as not uh, overall, but they're more yeah. athletic. They have more ability. They That's have more it dr- comfortable life. It, it drives me nuts to see someone that has gifts that I don't have. So something that takes me like I'm not strong. I never feel strong, and like it takes me a lot to get to where I can do certain techniques and do certain things to people that are bigger than me. Mm-hmm. It just takes a lot. And, and certain things aren't going to work ever on bigger people. Than you. Yeah. You have to realize that. Yeah. And, and that's what I'm saying. But then you got somebody that's 165 or 180 pounds that can bench press Buicks. Mm-hmm. And then they, they can go run and sprint and do all this other stuff that are so <sighs> friggin' athletic. And That's why they're and, not great, though. And then they don't, they're like, I'm going to do this. And they'll come here, they'll learn some stuff, or go wherever, learn some stuff. And then they're not, they're like, they have all this potential to be way, like, super great, mm. superstar. And they don't have the mentality. They quit mentally. They, they, they don't have that, dri- that real drive because everything's been easy. And even when you're that gifted, this isn't easy. So that's the that's the thing. Like you gotta, you don't have to anymore, I guess. But like a lot of fighters and a lot of people that are gonna be really good at fighting, they got some problems, and they don't always like not not bad, but they got issues. You know, they got family problems. They grew up in a rough life, or they were abused, or you know, what I mean, so a lot they really poor maybe they had a really good family but they Describe were just extremely poor team. Why is, you know what I'm saying that's most people like, that's the thing like, or any like people we want to rise up and be better I think inherently that is a human characteristic 
is that we want to do better for ourselves and then for our offspring. I think that's I think that that is natural. I think that's normal. But I think that fighting is 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 a normal natural way that it used to be determined who was worthy or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like society is different than it used to be. Oh, it's way but, different. But now. as humans, we're still animals and we still have that like desire to compete and to dominate, to dominate somebody like, and it, it's weird. And it's not weird, but it's weird to people who don't think, don't understand it. it. And, and I think people are really pent up. Because they don't, they don't get to do that. They don't I, get to express that. I say that all the time. Our society is design is not designed for what we're actually designed for. If that no, makes sense, we're supposed to be moving miles a day. Yeah, we're supposed to be foraging like and hunter gatherers and, like, and stuff. Yeah, making mm-hmm. places to stay and like yeah, you know, and building a sit, life. We're not sitting in a cubicle looking right. at a screen, a screen, and um, doing some repetitive process that somebody else could do. I can't do it. Or something else could do. I couldn't either, dude. That was why I was not very I was a job hopper. Like I, a lot of things. I was a job hopper. If you ask any of my people that I went to school with and at any school I went to or anywhere, really, if I was going to be anything, nah, he's going to be in jail. <laughs> like, 100%. I, every, I, was, I was that guy, white trash. Like, that's who I was. I had to fight... Dude, I, I don't think people understand, like, to get out from under your family's reputation and, your, like, where you're from and, like, and how people view you. Like, I, I'll tell you, when I was a kid, I used to exaggerate a little bit to make myself feel better to about my situation, I guess. And I had to learn that that's not a good way to do it. And I had to, like, I had to, like, consciously make a decision not to exaggerate things so that I was not a liar or was not like, and it, it the way that I grew up, man, everybody had to one up everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, you had to be better. You had to be better than this person. And you have two people sitting there talking like, excuse me, you have two people sitting there talking about, man, I cut this finger off. Well, man, I, I cut my leg and I had mm-hmm. 72,000 stitches. And it's just like one up, one up, one up, one up, one up. And uh, it's just crazy. And I think that's why you and I get along so good, though, is because we come up the similar, same. Very yeah, similar, yeah, come I think so, same. too. Um, but, you know, and I don't want to uh, – we talk about it in our – so and that's another thing, too, is, like, from our perspective, we talk about it a lot that, you know, life was tough this way, life was tough that way. Uh, a lot of times I've, I've talked to people, too, that did come from uh, privileged backgrounds or wealthy backgrounds or – whatever uh where their dads are making a lot of money but or their parents or whoever but they're not happy still they didn't yeah. they were ignored as a child or they didn't they didn't get to do who they what they wanted to do or what whatever that is you know and a lot of people are, are pent up for that reason too and they they were forced into some role based on their family but the, in a good way you got to smile what we, what we would yeah. say is like oh i would kill for somebody to give me that opportunity yeah but if you were forced into that role your whole life you would want to buck on that and so, seen, so that's right. also like there's something in that for people that, that, that that's what fighting is doing for like it, it's giving people fighting in jiu-jitsu too it's the same thing so people say uh jiu-jitsu is not a fight which i get it's not like i fault and i get it you're not getting hit it's not nearly as dangerous, but to struggle versus another person that is trying to hurt you, that is trying to make you get like, it is literally, they're trying to make you give up, right? They're trying something, another person is trying to make you quit. And there's something about internalizing that hell no, you cannot make me quit. You're not going to, you make will quit. not make me quit and there's something about that and it is empowering to every person walking this earth if you can stick your head up and you know for a fact that you will not quit then you can do a lot of things in your life i agree and that that's That's powerful that's it It is and that's where people go like there's a lot of people that find the sport and then they figure out some other thing that they really are passionate about and they go after that and then they become a doctor or like 
a marine biologist or whatever a welder yeah. or whatever an artist like whatever they wanted like they do that stuff because they they're confident that they can accomplish it they're confident that if they fail they can try again and get it right right because they're tough enough they're determined enough they're capable enough right and we're all determined capable and all that stuff on different levels and and that's what i've learned and i think that's again with us that can maybe make us a better coaches um in some ways is, is, you know, we've seen a lot of that, that struggle and, and we've seen a lot of that, uh, redemption from it, both like, you know, the, yeah. the cycle of failure to success, to failure, to success, to, but where, how, how every time you fail forward or higher than you fail when you just were being a bitch Absolutely. about it. I teach, I teach it's my like, kids as part of the formula. It's so f like, but you never Failure's knew that. You never huh? knew that before. And, and, like, I think a lot of people, were, and, and, I, and I'm so guilty of this, too. Uh, I shield my kids from failure. I, <laughs> I don't as much now as I was before, before I really started thinking about it or whatever. But, like, I, I, I babied my son a little bit too much in the beginning, you know, because I didn't, want, I didn't want him to have to struggle like I did. That was the whole point of this shit, <laughs> right? I, yeah. didn't want to, I don't want you to have to, you know what I mean? But then yeah. I realized, you know, is that that is it. That's that's. That's your personality, the struggle and overcoming the struggle and figuring out a way to do it like and that you can do it. It's like, oh, I, I, I can. got this. I can do I that. I got oh, this. Okay, yeah. cool. And so then other things are easier, you know, and it, it, it's it's one of those um, quotes from like Musashi is like, you know, in, in one thing you can learn 10,000 things and trying to master one any one thing you can learn how to do ten thousand other things along the way from just really trying to focus on one one tiny thing you'll figure out kind of like you said you figured out how to do all this construction stuff or whatever because you were only worried about this one building yep you didn't worry about the city hmm. you didn't worry about the block you worried about this one building for the last six years and you've learned all these different things that have become additions to this gym. Some of them are physical things that you can see, but a lot of them are intangible things that you bring every day when you walk through the door with your personality, with your mentality, and the way that you've brought a culture here to these people, you know? And that's that's one of the really overlooked parts of it, I think, not by us, but by people who don't know yeah. what's going on. It's not just choking and, and breaking each other's arms and stuff like that. <laughs> It yeah, is. It is, but it's not. But that's not all it is. No. That's not even what, I mean, not even that's not what me. most of it is for, like 10, for those of us that make it far. It's like 10% of it. You know, I, it's just, it's just hard. It's hard to separate myself from the martial artist. And, and I guess to bring it back full circle to where we kind of started off on this is like being forced to do that for so long has been tough. Uh, and I'm ready to get back to work. Me too. Like I'm chomping at the bit to get to work and to and to and to build the best team I can possibly build and the best group of individuals that I can it's possibly. In Perry, build. Georgia, Tenth Planet Perry, dude. Tenth Planet Jiu Jitsu Perry, guys. We're out here. Like, We're here. We're here now. <laughs> what are you gonna do? It's funny, man. And that's another thing too. Like Tenth Planet jiu-jitsu here in, in middle georgia and stuff like that never like, would have thought in a million years we they'd be a 10th planet you know, anywhere crazy. near me like, i remember guys coming into the gym down there like eric farmer uh down in valdosta he would come in and do some lockdown stuff uh years ago he was trying to do lockdown and so he was just going out and picking it up from other people so he didn't really have a good like solid well-rounded aspect of what was going on so i thought it was trash or whatever you know what i mean just because it, it was another guy that ha that didn't have a lot of experience with it trying to show it and use it you know what i mean yeah and so i, I just kind of you know like a lot of people I smash your lockdown yeah, it's, it's trash, trash I just, yeah you know and, and then it, somebody actually did it to you and then i got out there and got exposed <laughs> to it i was like oh i like this a lot so now it's one of the mo most like effective parts of my overall game. Is I've been using playing that. New Jersey so, uh, a lot lately. Yeah, and that was all trash too. You know, recently, as far as five mm. years, six Mine's years ago, still trash. <laughs> but I, I mean, mentally, like <laughs> no, five or six years ago, I would have said I didn't think that that was going to be the right move. 
Right. Ever, maybe. Until some people started doing it a lot to me, and I saw it a lot, and then I started doing it a lot. But now you're indoctrinated. Well, and you believe in I it. believe, yeah, because I've seen it, and I've <laughs> seen it work. I'm a believer. <laughs> but I believe in a lot of things. To, I believe in ways to break it. I believe in ways to pass it. It's jujitsu, man. Like, that, I just believe nothing, that. Everything works. And everything and, doesn't work. And nothing works. Yeah. At the right time. And that's that's the beauty of it, is that you can know all these crazy things, but if I just change my mind, it's not what you thought anymore. And then if you don't have that reaction, I won. Because we can roll a hundred times. And then once we've rolled enough, you know, we kind of figure out how the roll is going to go. But then you change one one dynamic, and then now we have a different 100 rolls. So you could have the same teammate over 10 years and, and really just, like, grow like, like against, against each, other. each other. Like, almost an adversarial yeah. relationship that's not adversarial. But, like, he beat me today. Yeah. He's not going to beat me tomorrow. And that that's that – I think everybody needs that one person that pushes them like that. TJ Spires mm-hmm. was my guy. Yeah. That was a guy like we go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth and grow together and grown together. That was my guy. Yeah. And I, I think I like partnering people up that I think would be good like tit for tat because when you experience the lose, the loss or whatever, you it's like dang. And then the next day you're like, I'm gonna get, get him it and it, and you you grow, you're like, Okay, he keeps he keeps passing my foot off with his knee and how do I stop that? Mm-hmm. And then you go to your coach and go, how do I stop this? Because I want to I want to get him. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's just how you grow. It's uh, $65 for the private lesson. There you go. <laughs> hey, I have a I have a jujitsu question for you. Simply because when you was talking about, oh, you think I'm going this way, and then we go that way, it was a, you was talking about something completely different, like mentally. Mm-hmm. But off the hip post, what do you do, like, if it's failed? If you, if you failed your hip post, you went up and, like, like our hip bump sweep, some people call it, or up and over, some people call it. Mm-hmm. So it has like thirty thousand names. What like if if failed what, a failed so attempt? You set up and got their arm like you trapped. You go to roll them. They post or they they drive back in or whatever whatever they do. Uh, I have an entire probably ninety percent of the time I'm gonna go for Kimura grip and, and start then working some kind of series. Try to that. try to like hit that little pivot. Thing coming Use out, it, maybe yeah. pendulum out the wrong way. That's that's. You know. I've been doing this. Uh, it's a weird thing, and I was like, I could not wait to tell you about it, and then I forgot until that particular moment. I'll hit the hip hop, and usually ninety percent of the time, if I don't cover the arm good, I allow them to post so I can triangle. Them. Mm-hmm. Like I've been doing that for a hundred years. Well, lately, if they post, all my students know like, oh, he's going triangle because that's. What you do. Uh, is what I do. And they learned me. We was talking about that earlier. Yep. And um, so now I walk backwards on my hands, mm-hmm. straighten them out. Like I've been, I'll bump them. Both my hands will be on, like just say I'm trying to bump them to the right. Both my hands will be on to the right. I have the arm covered. My other arm's out, right? I'll just push my hands back. And when they post, and they fall over the other there. way. Mm-hmm. And uh, been That's going cool. right in them out. And you usually end up trapping that far side arm to throw the leg over the arm on bar all day, nice. all day. Nice. I have to see that once you get some Dude, I, I, time and space. I have, I got it on video. I hit, um, I hit, uh, Jay, they're my guys obviously, but, uh, I hit Jay and bam, bam with it. And then I was like, what am I doing exactly? Like it, it was one of those things like where I done it twice mm-hmm. and I didn't realize what, what it, you were doing, what exactly I was doing. So, uh, because I've been hitting that back step a lot, uh, I do this dive through thing where I back step into four eleven, mm-hmm. and then I, I was like I dive away, and when they come up like they're trying to chase my hips, I just sit on, I like push them back and sit in their lap, <laughs> go four eleven. It look it looks cool, it looks weird when you see me like what the heck did he just do? But I've been hitting that, and now I'm using that to sweep from bottom side. And I'm using that in my hip house, and I it just I've just been playing with it. Yeah, just yeah, adding, like you do everything. Yeah, that's it. Every but time. It, I I haven't ever seen anybody do an instructional or anything on that hip house to that that sweep over. And um, do one. 
Yeah, I think I'm gonna do like a, a technique of the week with that. Do it. Anyway, yeah, there will be one. Uh, before I get you out of here, I got I asked this. And I'm going to ask this every single podcast I do. Um, I know you. I already know the answer for you. You've been in street fights before. You've uh, yeah, growing up, you've been in you've been in fights. Don't even try it, Stephen. Uh, what's your most memorable one? And can you describe it in like? Make me feel like I was there. Like your favorite one. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> Didn't expect that, did you? So I guess like, all right. First so. of all, we don't condone fighting in the street. We want you to come here in a controlled environment, but it happens. I, I was always probably 20 something young 20s at this point, I think. Yeah, because right. Because I told you what happened when I was 20. So I was probably 19 or 20 at this right um and so like i said i grew up in this uh where i grew up in bainbridge or whatever uh my dad and my uncles and the aiken name steven so, aiken well you you will beat people up it's what you do it's what you do because you're aching. There's no other option you're aching to beat people up well you just had to do it or you would be in trouble when you got home exactly never got found out yeah because like, and that was you, the worst trouble. we ain't raising no that punks was, there was that was the worst kind of trouble yeah was that mine too 100 um, because we ain't raising no punks you were born there boy so there's a couple <laughs> you, you were aching boy there's a couple of different ones that are funny but like, tell them as far as like we're a, here we're here now there's like all right well your favorite one my f- so that's that's what I'm saying. Like they're both they're both like, <laughs> one's like an adult favorite and one's like a kid favorite. Just so tell them both. So, He's torn, with, so we got to get both. It's funny that you <laughs> made me think about it in a different way too, because uh, you said street fight, and that made me go straight to like an adult, but like a little fight as a kid. Oh, I still, got one of those. It was still really serious, and yeah, you know, like if you were at, at that time, but like we were somewhere. And uh, God, dude, I couldn't have been I couldn't have been but four years old or five years old. I think I probably told you this story. Uh, Maybe, but tell us for my viewers. Um, and we're at like my uncle's house or something, and there's like a bunch of people over there, and we're jumping on the trampoline and stuff with a bunch of little kids. And uh, some little boy just like I can't remember the context of everything, but he like he beat me up. We got into a little fight. <clears throat> and he beat me up. He was older than me, or like a year older, or whatever. And, you know, when you little, that's everything. He's like, he's, he's five and I'm four. So that's the only reason he beat me up. Yeah. But, like, so I went and cried. I was going to tell my daddy this boy beat me up. Uh, nah, you know, bro. I'm about to try to get some some help or something. I don't know what I was going to do. Get him, I dad. Didn't I didn't know. Right. right. And so he just, like, told me don't don't come in here. You know, don't cry to me about it or whatever. Like, you better go figure out what you're going to do. Yeah. You know. <laughs> okay. And, and, and I knew what that – I knew – what that meant in my mind. And so like I went out there and I realized he had a little brother that was my age. So oh no. I beat up his little brother. Oh, you're <laughs> such a bully. <laughs> oh. That was my first black eye too. So that's, that's why I remember it so well because I had a black eye from the, the, his the, brother. The, black the, old, the older brother blacked my eye. So you blacked his So I went out there and beat up the little brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I, that's 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 why I was that is so, awesome. So that's been, but see, like you asked me why, why I was out a fighter, like stuff like that's why, like yeah. that's why, yeah. Uh, but then also all the other like things that I said. There's probably other things that are probably <laughs> terrible that I don't remember, like trauma stuff that it would be like if I uh, thought about, it, I'd be like, oh my god, I can't believe Steve, I did that. Steve was like, you got a little brother. <laughs> <laughs> they look they look very similar too. So it was like it was You it was felt good, good about yeah, it. I did. I felt good. I still feel good about it. <laughs> he I'm, said I still feel good about it. I'm proud of myself. Like this is cause your brother Bro, like, hey. I had to like <laughs> But it's kind of one of those weird things like it wasn't right or wrong or whatever to me. But looking as a parent now, it's like God. I hope I don't send my kid out there to do that at four or five years old, like that, right. with the expectation to just go handle your own problems. Uh but like having the mindset to go out there and to do something was was cool, and like especially at that age, right? It's, it's for for what we're talking about, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, and so I, I've always thought that that was a cool thing that I did. That it made me feel brave. Yeah, you were. That, 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 I mean, I had you a was. black eye. I already had a black yeah. eye. It's the first time I ever got beat up in my life. I think 
that I can like besides cousins or something like that that I don't remember or count or whatever you know yeah. I, had a, I had a couple cousins that I, or I had a few cousins that were around my age actually you know uh, so we fought a lot. So I would win and lose a lot of fights with my cousins that were my age and my size. So it was no big like I had older cousins that. But was, you, it don't seem real when you're fighting not, them. It didn't like matter. you're it you it is real. Like you're getting black eyes and busted lips. But we weren't fighting to hurt each other. Yeah, and I I get that because I had cousins and stuff, and I get that. So some people won't get that. Yeah, but like. I get that because I mean, like animals do. Again, like dogs or whatever, they go out there and they play and they tussle around with each other and they wrestle and play and fight. And that's it's. We're just animals, man. We're just really social creatures that have built buildings to separate us and stuff like that. Yeah. And so six feet rules now. Now, yeah, it's even <laughs> worse. But my favorite, I guess, adult ish style one. So taking all that I've said into context. Oh. Uh, Were you an MMA fighter at this time? Oh, heck no. I, I have not been in a fight that was not sanctioned or that wasn't in a cage since I started training. Really? I've not, I've not done it. Um, so I'm, I guess I'm a bad guy. Like, I've leg kicked three people. <laughs> I, so I've not had to. Like, I, I've talked myself out of things. I've talked people out of things. But I'm bigger than you, so I look meaner than you probably, too. Uh, a little bit more intimidating when I say stuff than when you say stuff. Dude. Um, so it's easier for me to like. A guy, I will come out of Lowe's. A guy was stealing stuff out of my truck. I was like, hey, that's my stuff. Mm. And he had my stuff in his hands. And he's, no, like, my, he's like, my boss told me to get this. And I'm like, that's not your boss's truck. This is my truck. And the guy like tried to run with my stuff. And I just, there was a car. So he went around the front of the car. I come around the back of the car and I leg kicked that man so hard. Bully. Yeah, I dropped him. He hit the ground and he was like, all my stuff just went across the thing. And I'm like, why did you do that? <laughs> why did you? <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, leg kicked him. So and I, that's all it took, though. I guess I did a little bit of stuff when I was bouncing, but I never hit anybody. I, I oh, yeah. you know, I didn't have, that wasn't a fight. It was breaking up stuff and like getting people to calm down. Yeah, I, I went on a tangent about leg kick. Leg kicks work. They definitely do. They'll <laughs> that, fold people. That don't you work. don't even have to fight anymore. You just leg kick them, especially if you know how to kick. Yeah. That's my favorite thing to do. It's easy. Yeah. The other time I leg kicked a guy, gas station guy had his one. He had a mullet and an old F one fifty truck. It was beautiful, and he was yelling at his girlfriend, and he was like yelling at her, like doing this and stuff. I went in the store. I come out, he's got her by her hair, shaking her, and he, like, smack, like smacked her. Not, like, bang, bang, but smacked her in the face. And like, I was like, hey, man, chill out. And he was like, what are you going to do about it, boy? And he got out of his truck, and it scared me because he got out of his truck and was, like, coming towards me. Mm-hmm. Man, I hit that man with a two, three leg kick. <laughs> and then his girl got out of the truck. No and come running over there like no no no. i just slept her boyfriend husband whatever he was and uh (laughs) i was like well i gotta go i drove off and didn't even pump the gas i paid for nice yeah so yeah so yeah that's not good man like and and that's the case of being a good samaritan you could have got yourself in a lot of trouble because I've seen, I would never do it again. I've seen situations where stuff like that happens. Never do it again. Someone tries to be, and like, that's so sad. But she was getting smacked it's so around. sad, because like, I can't I, was say like, I wouldn't try to do the same thing either, right? But I've seen it play I probably out would. I trouble. probably would be like, hey, it's gonna be and then, but I you. wouldn't, like. Keep distance now, Yeah, yeah, right? next time I'll be like, I won't let him get that close to me. And that's the thing I've learned, and that's probably why I haven't been in so many fights or, or any. Managing space. I just manage distance. distance. I don't let anybody yeah. get close to me. And if they start getting close enough, I start. Letting them know that I'm get scared. Be, I'm fully hostile. We're not scared, but yeah, no, I'm scared. Yeah, right. It's time that's to go. I'm hostile yeah. when I get scared, and I'm that's the scared. first thing I tell the police too. Is like, yeah. why did you do that? I was scared. I was scared. I thought it was gonna hurt me. Yeah, I was scared. But so to to just tie that story yeah, the, back the, to, the, finish, the older to fight. finish that fight the, up the, or whatever. The adult fight. Um. So, you know, we're known for being pretty tough. Uh, we can't let people like punk you out at all. Yeah, it's yeah, it's not happening. You got to so, you die first. Maybe I internalized this message a lot more than my my cousins that were all my age, all of them that were kind of around my age. Because looking back, I, I fought a lot. 
uh, when I was younger about stuff like this, somebody would punk out one of my cousins, and then I'd go beat him up because I wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't gonna happen. Yeah, we're the you're, same age. They, you're aching. We're, we're the same age. You're so aching, like, and you're you not. You can't yeah. do that to him or to you know. To, yeah, it's not because that he's aching. Right. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. We fight one. You're of a us. protector. Like you could beat him up. Like fight him and beat him up. That's okay. I, that don't mean I'm gonna come fight you. But right. you're not gonna just like punk people out. Yeah, you're not gonna him. say this and make him. He's not yeah. gonna retaliate. Yeah. Not so. against the Aiken or Barnett or whatever. Yeah. So we were somewhere hanging out, me and my buddy Michael, who's a black belt now too. Funny. Nice. Uh, and we were somewhere, and one of my cousins that we were hanging out with a lot of the time calls and was like, "Hey, um, such and such is doing this and talking, whatever." He's over at so and so's house. Uh, I'm about to go over there, and and get him. And I was like, <laughs> "I'm gonna go get him." Well, I mean, you know, I'm sure it was a lot more like yeah. worse like, than I'm that. Go yeah, get all yeah. kind of crazy oh, stuff. Man. And so, me and Michael were like, "All right, well, we're gonna meet you over there because I want to make sure that nothing happens. You make sure you don't sure. get jumped, right? Make sure I'm not there it's to, up to do up. anything at all, but to make sure that he's okay. And that's why he called me. And this is my impression so we get there he's not there yet so then it's already awkward <laughs> you're just sitting there waiting for him we pull up in the yard, right and so i'm not gonna leave or whatever kind of because i don't know what we're gonna do and so they know who i am though the the, the guy who owns the house does at least he knows who yeah I am. uh his friend who's there who's the one that's in trouble now doesn't know that <laughs> he doesn't know he's in trouble yet either uh but he's like really mouthy uh my cousin gets there, another like set of our two friends or whatever kind of gets there. And so then like the little peacock session starts between those two guys. Yeah. Uh, my cousin, they're talking whatever, they're trying to punk each, you know, trying to see who's going to not. Why are you touching me? Who ain't going to do nothing, circling, circling, you know, yeah. whatever. And then finally that dude uh, was just like, man, none of y'all are going to do anything. Every one of y'all are a bunch of pussies. Oh. And I was like, really? Oh. And he was like, yeah, really? And I was like. I made it about you then. All right. So that's not true. Um, so I just went at I went. <laughs> he said, that's not true. So I went I went right at him. Uh, well, back at this period is when everybody was wearing those. Uh, everybody was wearing the football jerseys as like fashion. You know, they would be like two. Yeah, way big, so many, so, like a 3X so, on, right. a, on a, so somebody should be wearing a large. So I see this dude walking around or whatever, and he's got on this big jersey. He looks big, like bigger than I think. Like not bigger than me, but close as yeah. to my size-ish, you know, with this jersey on and stuff. And so he starts moving towards me. And I'm like, cool, we're going to, because I, I, so I've already long ago established that I'm not going to sit here and talk mm-hmm. trash to people. If yeah, we're going to fight, we're going to fight. And especially if you're coming towards me and you get in this kind of bubble, I'm going to hit you first. I'm not going to wait for you to hit me. I'm too I'm not, little to let somebody hit I me first. Not, I'm scared. Not happening. You may yep. hurt me. I need to win. Yeah. I don't care about fair per se as far as that goes because you've already broken the, the yeah. international peace treaty. <laughs> the peace you know treaty. You're too close. You, you so broke my I, bubble, I, I, dog. I'm going to hit you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and so I learned that a long time ago. At this, point. I tell people all the time, uh, I'm too little. I can't let you hit me first. And so I would melt. He moves towards me, and I just body lock him, and I'm gonna slam him. And I grab him, and I pick him up, dude. And he's light. And he comes over my head, and I just like slam him, <laughs> like like a W. Like I don't go to, I don't fall with him. Cause he's, he's like, he's not heavy. Like he don't pull me down or anything. I slam him like a WWE, like slam. And he just like hits the concrete. And I like punched him once or twice or something like that. But he was just like curled up in the fetal position. Oh my God. Uh, that one is my favorite just because it was funny. <laughs> uh, like, I don't have any really crazy ones. You know, that I get some crazy What did everybody up. say? They was like, ooh. Like my, okay, so my cousin tried to run up there and tried to hit him while he was on the and ground. And you weren't allowing that. I, I almost fought him right there. Because, the, again, that's not what that's not what we do. It's yeah. not how we do this. It's that's fair. not what we're here for. Yeah, we're well, fair one-on-one. If, if we're fighting, like, it's kind of that weird thing. It's like, are we fighting for money or are we fighting for respect? And they're different. It was very you know different. What I mean? And then are we fighting because I need to live or die? 
that's also a different thing. It's you know? very different there, and too. So, like, this guy was done, first of all. He was beat. Like, he was he was done. He, he, like, he wasn't hurt, but he, he like, he was he didn't, all he was indications done. that yeah, the fight was It was out. done. Oh, I yeah. messed up, yeah. you know. Uh, and so, <laughs> to run over there and try to do that when you wouldn't do it square. Like, this was your fight. The whole fight was your fight, not mine. So you wait for me to do all the work, take all the risk, and then you're going to come and try to hit some dude that's on the ground. Like, I'm not with that. I've never been with that. I don't I don't like that. You're a stuff. protector. That's I why. Am. Right, and exactly. Me too. And yeah. like I've been yeah. in I've been in situations before where there's guys that I was friends with and they've like ganged up on a kid, like not not yet, but they were trying to act like they were going to punk this kid out and I can remember me and me and Michael, we've been best friends for a long time. But, like, we just kind of, like, we told him, was like, dude, we know that these guys are kind of our buddies, but if you want to punch him in the mouth, we'll make sure everybody else stays back or we'll help you. And then you, that boy, like, whole life changed right away. And then everybody else was like, oh, uh, uh, oh, no, no, no. Yeah. And it's like, see, y'all ain't about it, though. You're not, like, I hate stuff like that. I hate people that are not tough guys that try to act like tough guys because tough guys don't act like they're tough. They're just tough, right? You, yeah. You don't have to be out there peacocking around and telling everybody what you're going to do. And I learned that about myself, right, through trial and error and through, you know, being fake and, and project, yeah. projecting out things that weren't really always true. That fully and stuff like that. Right, yeah, time. exactly, 100%, dude. And, like, uh, learning through jiu-jitsu and stuff, like, like, again, I don't know everything. And that was hard sometimes to say. I didn't – I don't know that, you know. And, like, even still, somebody will show me something – and I have that urge to say, oh, yeah, 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 I do that all the time. And I don't know what it is. I've never seen it, you know. <laughs> but I still have that, like, internal urge to be right. Uh, but I, I've learned to temper it a lot. And so I think that's that's really uh, a cool part of the whole whole shebang for me, too. Like I say, it does everything for me. It, it, it controls or helps me think of how to control myself in – Every aspect, like that's I've, of your life, I've, of all mm-hmm. ways, like this, it's the way I've learned to be disciplined. Me, me too, <clears throat> and I think that's it's amazing. To to, I was not disciplined in anything, nothing, and like I job hopped everything, just nothing. And then this, like, that was one. That was the only boundary I had in my first relationship. I'm gonna go train. Like everything else is like whatever you tell me to do, I, I'll do it, cause I, I you know I care or whatever. But I five thirty five thirty come around, I'm headed to road. that gym. I'm on the road headed to that gym. Like that's that's it. That's the only thing in my life that I was like at this time I'm doing this, mm-hmm. and that's the only thing. Like it didn't matter who wanted me to help them. Like I go above and beyond for people I call friend, but training times like I'm not bending, I'm going. It's your time. It's special, man. It's 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 crazy. It's yeah. what made me disciplined, though. Yeah, I mean, it, it it is, and so that's okay. And it's okay for everybody to have something like that. That's it's also healthy. why I'm it's not in jail. That's healthy, you know. Uh. Yeah, I could be, totally be deader in jail by now. Oh, I would have. If, been. if I, I, and that's an easy oh. thing to say, right? Maybe I would have found something else that would have. Uh, t- I don't know, right? But I definitely don't think so. I don't. I don't think there's so nothing either. that there's still nothing that really turns me on like this. Uh, there's nothing that gets me as motivated and fired up and, and everything except for trading and stuff. I think Mandy's been calling me or something, so I'm probably in trouble. Let me look at this real quick. Yeah. So yep. Yeah. We've been on here oh, for an yeah. hour and 50 minutes. Wow. Pretty good. It seems like it just... Well, we like to talk to each other anyway, so yeah. we'll, up, we'll be on the phone sometimes, but I'll be like, all right, I got to... Yeah, go I'll look, and I'm like, I'm like, Steven, we gotta go. sorry, buddy. Uh, <laughs> And listen, man, just tell me to shut up sometimes. I talk a lot. For sure. And I, I tend to still want to, t- like, you'll tell a story, and then I'm like, well, let me tell you about this story. And then I'm like, well, let me tell you about my life. And I, I said, That's part okay. of, I'm going to get to a point to where it happens less and less with me. Uh, that's one of the things in my life. It's like personal growth. Like, I got all those books over there on the table. Uh, David Goggins' book, uh, Can't Hurt Me. Mm-hmm. I uh, got the business books because all of these things that that I am doing is to 
make me a better coach, make me a better boyfriend, better dad, better person. Mm-hmm. And um, it's funny that where we are in life and what we do in life, it has a uh, like people look at us and uh, they're like, oh, they're MMA fighters, and they think that we're these like mean, like we're we're, we're dumb, yeah. Are dumb, and then they talk to us, and they're like, oh, "Wow, like you're you're really nice. You're not what I would expected." Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I get beat up by people all the time. Like, you do this, and you realize like there's people out there that can just fold you into a pretzel, mm-hmm. and like it just because it doesn't matter how much money you got. <laughs> it doesn't matter what your job title is. None of that. It doesn't matter what school you graduated from. It does, nothing matters when you're out there on the mats except for what you're doing right then. Like, and that's, that's it, right? I think that's the power in it is that everybody's equal in that it doesn't matter what you were before you did this. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to look right at the camera when I say this. I'm 138 pounds right now. Like, I'm 138 pounds right now. Heavyweight. Heavyweight. But I absolutely love love grabbing a hold of someone that's never trained when they come in and they have this idea because I do not let my 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 newer students roll with anybody that's not seasoned not to prove a point or anything like but to protect them because these these they think it's like a real fight they haven't learned these lessons yet but I I love the look on their face when a when a 140 pound person just took them down and then settled on them and they feel like a little truck. They can't get off. Yeah, that is, like, I I don't, uh, it's a fine line between hurting someone's ego or, like, pushing it too far or whatever, and I've had to learn that, that line. But I love it. That is the best feeling in the world to kind of show someone, not me, but the martial art actually works. You know? Like to sh- to to no, that's it, right? It's to show matter. that it actually works. Like, look, you're you're this guy that can bench press a beer. Like, you, how much you bench? Like three hundred. Push me off. Yeah, yeah. Do, do it again. Yeah. <laughs> do it again. Do it again. <laughs> like, oh, you can't mo- wait. Hold on, wait. I wasn't ready. Yeah. Yeah. Just Push. Catch, catch the hand. Just keep pushing, baby. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing. It's like. That's what I love about it. And then I meet people like you uh, that are like lifelong friends. Yeah, for sure, dude. Like, dude, I, I had no idea walking into the gym, right, right, making that hour and 15-minute drive, hour and 20-minute drive was going to change my life the way that it did. And it did because here we are. I got a gym. We got Tech Talk. Mm. We got uh, 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu Perry coming Ooh. up. Woo! Is it June 1st, right? Uh, we're going to try to do it June 1st, yeah. We're going to start slow, bringing in bodies and just build out from there. I'm ready. I'm ready to get over there and learn June. and train. Also, we're we're back full speed June 1st. I'm going to section off mats and let people be battle buddies if they, like, see each other outside mm-hmm. or whatever, if that's what they want to do. But that's for the people that want to do it. And we're going to kill – we're not letting the parents come in anymore. Like, we used to have, like, 30 parents sitting on the bleachers watching their kids grapple and cheering them on, and I love that part of it. But for this little while, while we're trying to be clean and still get everybody back. Less bodies, the better. Yeah. So that's Especially gonna, ones that aren't training. Oh, it's going to be a, a hard learning curve for some parents. I feel like it's going to be a shock mm-hmm. because for six years, we have a fan club over there cheering the kids on. Mm-hmm. So there's that. Yeah. It's, we're all going to get used to whatever the new, like, way of doing stuff is and figure it out, man. I don't think it's going to die. I think it's just going to get stronger. Uh, I'm still getting a lot of people that are interested in signing up at our school. Yeah. So I think it's just going to take a little time to slowly get it going and, and safely get it going that way, you know. I think it's going to be like anything. Some people just like whatever, and some people are like, no, uh, just like anything. Uh, it's just – Market and move forward, I guess. Yep, yep. Um, All right, uh, dude. Well, ten, just ten, I was gonna say, uh, I appreciate you having me out here, dude. I appreciate everything that you've done throughout the years, dude. It's been as cool for me to have you uh, 
as probably you think it is for you to have me, or whatever that means, maybe. Uh, we've done, you know, we've been a lot of different places between here and Valdosta and up to Atlanta, down to Costa Rica. And different it's my things. first time flying too, by the way. Right. Like so landing like, in a plane. So like you've been, you've been a, a, a consistent, like good friend, student, whatever, kind of whatever, like all those kind of hats ever since I've really gotten to know you, man. So it's been easy to stay friends with you. It's been easy to kind of want to stay in touch with you. It's been easy to want to see you be successful. It's been very easy to want to do anything I can to help you because I see like your heart and I see how much you want to help other people. Uh, I Thank know, you. I know your background isn't the one that's like, you're going to print out a sheet on and everybody's going to be like, Oh my God, you know, you don't have like all the accolades and awards and whatever, whatever, but that's not the point either. Right. We talked about that. You can have the world titles and not be a good person. I know a lot of asshole competitors that are, you know, really good competitors that aren't good people. That's not the point. I'm not, I, I want good people in my life. I want good people around me. So, like, I appreciate you trying so hard to be in my life enough that we've really made this something that's going to be, like, a permanent friendship that, that has been really cool to follow. Like like you said, throughout the last several years from here uh, to Valdosta, back when I, like, when I was in San Diego, we were still talking a lot. You know, so it, it's really cool, and, and I just want you to know that I do appreciate you too, man. It's been really fun. That's awesome. Thank you. That means a lot to me. I, I don't think you realize it means a lot, man. So, well, let's kill it. Let's tech let's talk. Tech talk. All right. All right. Peace.